The 555 timer chip can be configured in three basic modes, monostable, astable, and bistable. In this video, we'll be looking at how to use a 555 timer chip in monostable mode, also known as one-shot mode. To try and keep this introduction more focused, I won't get too much into how the 555 timer actually works, but I will make a separate video on that topic soon. The monostable mode is sometimes described as working like an egg timer. When you put it in motion, the timer turns on the output, and after that specified interval of time has elapsed, it turns off the output and stops. It's called monostable because when we configure it that way, it has only one stable mode, which is that the pin 3 output is off. When the 555 is sent a trigger pulse, like I'm doing right now with this switch, the stable state gets interrupted for a period of time that is determined by the value of this resistor and capacitor. During that interval of time, the pin 3 output changes from low to high. When the interval finishes, it returns the output to its stable state, which is low. Each trigger pulse provides a single output pulse, and when the time interval is reached, that output pulse stops and the circuit resets until a new pulse is detected. Let's take a closer look at how the circuit is constructed. First, note that I have a 10 kilo ohm resistor and switch connected to the trigger input, which is pin 2. I'm using a push button switch so its normal state is open, and if the switch isn't depressed, the 10 kilo ohm resistor supplies a voltage input to pin 2, which means that the trigger input is high. When the trigger input is high, the output voltage on pin 3 is close to zero. When we push the switch, we short circuit that supply voltage going to pin 2 back to ground. This means that the supply voltage to pin 2 is now zero, and the output voltage at pin 3 goes high. That's how the trigger portion of this circuit actually works. Now let's look at the timing portion. As mentioned before, the timing is controlled by the resistor capacitor circuit. These two values determine how long the output actually remains high. Basically, as soon as the timer has been triggered, the electrolytic capacitor begins to charge and the voltage across it increases. Note that I have pins 6 and 7, which are the threshold and discharge pins, tied together with a jumper wire. Pin 6 is watching the voltage across the capacitor, and as soon as it reaches two-thirds of the supply voltage, the timing cycle ends, and the pin 3 output returns back to its stable state being low. Pin 7 is the discharge pin, and it's responsible for discharging the capacitor in this circuit. I'll explain more about what makes that possible within the 555 chip in another video, but basically when the output pin 3 is low, pin 7 discharges to ground via the capacitor. When pin 3 is high, current is allowed to flow through our resistor and capacitor circuit. The rate of charge is determined by the resistor value. Now, in this circuit, we have the output going to light this blue LED. But how can we determine in advance what that time interval will be once it's actually triggered? We can use a basic formula to determine the duration, which is T equals 1.1 times R times C. T is the time interval in seconds that we want to determine. R is the resistance value of our timing resistor in ohms. And C is the capacitance value of our timing capacitor in farads. Okay, let's work through a few practical examples to test that formula out. So if we want to determine the duration of the output when I depress this push switch, we need to apply the formula to the values that we have for this resistor and this capacitor. So we know that the time interval of the output would be equal to 1.1 multiplied by the resistance value, which in this case is 10,000 ohms, multiplied by the capacitance value, which in this case is 0.1 microfarads, or 0.0000001 farads. And it's important to remember that when you're applying this formula, we do need to convert the component value to ohms and farads not kilo ohms or microfarads. So if we do uh, the math, it's 1.1 multiplied by 10,000 multiplied by 0 0.000001 farads. 
which gives us a time interval of 0.0011 seconds. I don't have the ability to uh, measure the duration that precisely, but if I depress the push switch, you can see uh, that it's a very quick flash that we're getting from the output LED. Okay, let's work through a second example. And in this case, I'll leave the resistor value the same, so 10 kilo ohms, but I'll switch the electrolytic capacitor out for a 220 microfarad capacitor. 220 microfarads is 0.00022 farads. And so if we change that value in our formula, we get a projected time interval for our output of 2.42 seconds. And if I press the switch, that's what we'll get. Okay, now if we move on to a third example, and again, I'll leave the resistor value the same. I'll switch out the capacitor for a 1000 microfarad capacitor. So that is the equivalent of 0.001 farads. We'll update our formula again, and this time we're projecting that we'll have an output duration of 11 seconds. Now, if you're building this circuit yourself, uh, there are two pins in this circuit I haven't really touched on, which is pin four and pin five. Uh, pin four is the reset pin. It acts a little bit like the trigger input, whereby reset is an active low input. And so for this to work, we want pin four to be connected to the supply voltage. And you can see I've connected pin four there with a red jumper wire to the positive uh, power rail on the breadboard. Pin five is the control pin. And in most circuits where you're using a 555 timer, we can just connect that to ground using a small 0.01 microfarad capacitor. So in this case, you can see I have that 0.01 uh, microfarad ceramic capacitor going from pin five directly to the ground rail on the breadboard. I should add that the capacitor I have going from that control pin to ground isn't entirely necessary. So if you construct this circuit without that capacitor, uh, it will still function, just as you can see here. The purpose of that capacitor, though, is to flatten out any potential fluctuations in the supply voltage uh, that could potentially affect the timing accuracy. Additionally, you'll note I've got jumper wires going from the ground rail to the other side of the breadboard and likewise for the voltage power rail. That's really just to connect the upper and lower power rails on the breadboard and complete the circuit. The 555 in monostable mode is able to generate pulses that last for anywhere from a few microseconds all the way up to multiple hours. One thing to note though is to avoid selecting large value capacitors that have wide ranging tolerances since if their actual value is far apart from their marked value, it's going to affect your time interval accuracy. Now, another problem you may encounter with these high value capacitors is its high leakage current. That can also affect timing accuracy. If your project requires a large capacitance, try looking at something like a tantalum capacitor with a lower leakage current. On the opposite end of the capacitance spectrum is if you're using values less than say 100 picofarads to generate a very short pulse, Stray capacitance in the circuit itself can become an issue that affects timing, so something else to consider. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please click like. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you'd like to see more content like this soon, don't forget to subscribe.